Championships from Crystal Palace in London. You're watching on Screen Sport, the first of four days coverage, and we start off with the junior final between East London Royal and Brixton Topcats. I'm Mike Carlson. I'll be giving you the play-by-play, -play. and with me is a man who knows both these teams well, Alton Bird. And Alton, there you see the lineup for East London. Well, that lineup is loaded with talented players who play for England under 15, under 17, and under 19. And the two players you ought to watch, number seven, Barry Gooch, the captain, who by all accounts, and I've seen him play, is probably the best young point guard prospect in the United Kingdom. And the other is number 14, Chris Erskine, who is a great, great athlete, a three-sport specialist. He plays football, he runs athletically, the 100 meters, one of the fastest in Britain, and he's also a great basketball player. And in number 13, Martin Gore, they've got a big center who's got some mobility. Now we see Brixton Topcats, coached by Paul Ambrosius, and they're a bit younger team, not quite the depth of talent that East London have, but still a pretty useful side. Very useful and very, very quick. They've got a lot of good, young, small players, guys to watch. David Odzikovic, who is their perimeter, their best perimeter shooter, and probably their best perimeter player. And then number 14, Junior Williams, who's also a very good player, good point guard. But the key to this team will be Eddie Ozeyawuzu, <laughs> our man Eddie. Ozeyawuzu. And uh, it should be a good test. And here's the opening tap off. Brixton Topcats playing in black. East London Royals out of Tower Hamlets playing in blue. East London the favorites. Both these teams have gotten past some tough opposition to get here into the final. And that's number 15, Tim Berkowitz at guard. And the ball comes loose to Barry Gooch. And Gooch takes it all the way down and gets fouled. And Barry Gooch, one of the guys you said to look out for. Well, he's very, very quick. He has good court sense. And what I like about him most is he knows how to distribute the ball. He can advance the ball up the floor with long passes. And that's something you don't see in the United Kingdom very often. And Gooch misses the first free throw. And that Eddie Munster haircut is something you don't see in the United Kingdom too often either. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be looking for you at some point soon. <laughs> so the first points of the game to the East London Royals and their captain, Barry Gooch. Now 15 is Tim Berkowitz. I think what you'll find with Brixton, Brixton cannot compete, you know, in terms of athleticism with East London and in terms of size. But uh, what you will find is they'll be much more deliberate and take their time. They turn the ball over again, and it's 14. Chris Erskine, one of the fastest men in Britain, over 100 meters, athlete, nat world-class athlete in more than one sport. It's three nothing for East London Royals. 13, Eddie Azuguozu. Brixton very, very tentative offensively. Right now they're quite happy to stay outside, try and get the ball inside where they're trying to compete with East London size. And I, to be honest, Mike, that isn't going to work. Okay, the ball going off. You see their number 11, Wayne Henry. That's Erskine with the ball. Happy to take it in on, on his own. Rebound to Martin Gore. Martin Gore, about six foot nine. Center doing a good job underneath. And Brixton have got to get their offense into gear and stop East London from running away with this one. Seems a little bit like they might even be intimidated right off the bat by East London. Well, East London has a great national reputation. They are perennially either the best team or one of the best teams in all of Britain at this age bracket. You saw Erskine blocking that three point attempt. Pass goes through his hands at the other end, though, and back over to Brixton Topcats. Brixton's just got to get a little bit more confident, get a little bit more courageous, and try and make sure that they stay in the flow of what they want to do offensively. They have some great, great young talent on this Brixton ball club. Asaya Wusu passing it in. The ball's deflected away. Nice look by Gooch. And as Richard Thomas goes up for the shot, he's followed by Junior Williams, and he'll go to the line, and Gooch has good vision. That was a quick look off the, well, off the turnover. He's made two good passes, Mike, and, and both of them were from half court to the basket. One went through Erskine's hands. The other one was caught, and he drew a foul. And uh, that's what you like to see in, in terms of point guards, advancing the ball by pass as opposed to by dribble. 
missing the first. And Richard Thomas misses both shots, but the rebound comes back to East London. Gore in the post. Gooch for three. It's off the front of the rim, and now it's a two on one. And Erskine, <laughs> you call that out, he's got some speed. But he just outran that ball that time. And foul on the rebound. Ball goes over to Brixton Topcats. And Junior Williams brings it up. Let's see, Adzakovic getting into a little trouble as he tried to set the pick. Berkowitz misses the three. Gooch now on the break, two on one. Looks the other way, Erskine, they're not gonna stop him on a layup like that. He's got such great speed, Mike, and, and Gooch there with a look away pass a la Magic Johnson, except without the uh, extra foot <laughs> in terms of height. <laughs> He's been watching screen, the NBA on screen sport or somewhere. <laughs> okay, 15, Tim Berkowitz. And I think, I think Paul Ambrosius is gonna have to take a time out here just to settle his kids down. They're very, very pensive. Very, very, very hey, you know, in awe of East London, and that's what they're going to need to do, get some shots at the basket. Berkowitz's three-pointer, the first points of the game for Brixton Topcats. 7-3, East London in the lead. Erskine trying to get it into Gore, but it's stolen away by Henry. Aseusu. Aseusu open on the baseline, but misses. Rebound comes off to Patras Gordon, but stolen away. Oh, and the pass goes through, and Gooch comes up with it. And again, the look away pass, but it seemed to fool Richard Thomas. Behind the back pass bounces off Ben Ajo. Uh, sorry, bounces off Patras Gordon. I'm sure my old friend Paul Ambrosius right now is sitting there saying, what are we trying to do here, folks? Oh, yeah, it's really looking easy. And I really do think he's going to need to call a timeout fairly shortly just to settle these kids down and say, hey, this is only East London. We aren't playing the Lakers or the Chicago Bulls. Just play like you normally play. So Patrick Gordon with the three. A little traveling there by Junior Williams. Good first move. One step too many. And Gooch brings it up past Junior Williams. Erskine alone on the layup. Oh, yes. And it's 11 to 3. It's got, to, got to agree with you, it's timeout time. Yeah, it's very surprising because usually Brixton teams, both at senior and junior level, are pressure defense type players because they have so much quickness. This team seems to be laying back, almost trying to be a bit cool about being out here. And, you know, if, if they play at that level, East London's going to beat them by 50. Wayne Henry missing and getting his own rebound. Tim Berkovitz looking underneath for Aseosu. Berkovitz. Gooch again with the long outlet pass. Richard Thomas, and which has good vision in the leads now 10 13 3. Gore tips that pass away. Brixton unable to get the ball within six feet of the basket at all. That size is obviously intimidating them and on their penetration. They're all leaving their feet, trying to make passes, and you just can't do that. Here's that replay, Mike, of Gucci's ability to get the ball up the floor. That's a pass that's 45, 50 feet long, and that gets him an easy basket. Right on target, gets Richard Thomas in stride, and Richard Thomas finishes it off. Two quick passes in a bucket. East London Royals looking pretty smooth here. And Brixton Topcats down 13 to three. Time to regroup. Now, if they put pressure on, is, is it that they think that uh, Erskine and Gooch are just too quick, too good for them? 
Yeah, but it's not like Brixton doesn't have quick enough guards. They certainly have quick enough guards, probably quicker than than uh, Gooch anyway. Erskine's pretty difficult, but he, he doesn't do much with the ball. He's great at running the floor. He fills the lanes because of his quickness. And I really think you gotta exert a little bit of pressure on Barry Gooch to force him to, to make some turnovers. And no sooner does Alton Bird say it than Junior Williams comes down in the full court riding Gooch. And, and gets, Gooch steps on the line. Gets a turnover. And that's it. 13-3, but Brixton Topcats picking up their first turnover of the game. And Gooch nearly steals it back from Berkovitz. And a three-pointer by Junior Williams, 13-6. And Gooch just over the outstretched arms of Steve Pattyfoot. That's a foul on Junior Williams, Mike. And it wasn't Steve Patty, but it's still Wayne Henry in the game. Williams picks up the foul. Brixton gone to his own. I think Paul Ambrosius is gambling that he would rather East London beat them from perimeter than beat them with the size inside against a man-to-man. -man. And you see Gore, who's got about a six-inch height advantage on Odzakovic. Richard Thomas picking up the rebound and putting it in, but they're taking advantage of that size, whether they play man-to-man -man or zone. As I said, Mike, I'm really surprised that Brixton aren't more competitive in making things happen. That's better penetration, except they ran into some pretty big trees in there from East London. And Gore, who's laying off his man, Gooch comes down, tries to lay it in fancy, and it doesn't work. Gore recovered quickly to disrupt that shot. Now Odzakovich dishes again for the second time, and this time James Perkins doesn't make a mistake and puts it in. Gore wasn't back to get in the way. It's 15-8, and James Perkins goes to the line with a chance to complete a three-point play. Well, what surprised me is Barry Gooch has come down and made a couple of plays and just uh, hasn't gotten back on defense. We'll talk about that afterwards. Mike. Okay, and we're going to go to a break. We'll be back. It's 15-9, East London in the lead. To Crystal Palace, we've got the junior championship at the World Invitational Tournament. Mike Carlson and Alton Bird. And when we left, it was 15-9. Brixton just starting to fight back in the game. And now we've got a one-pointer. Well, I think the pressure defense has caused East London some problems. And you know, as I was talking about before, the break, Mike, you know, Barry Gooch makes some mistakes. He's got to make sure that he gets back because you know, he tends to make a mistake and then look real cool about him making a mistake. And that caused people some problems. Carl Erskine missing on the alley-oop. But East London keep the ball. That one's way off, and it goes over to Brixton. You notice Brixton putting on the full court pressure. A foul, ref. And a foul, ref. yes, indeed, it was a foul, ref. <laughs> but he didn't call it. Is that Humphrey Long? Is that the voice of Humphrey Long? No, I don't think it was Humphrey Long. I think it was someone else on the Brixton side complaining about an over-the-back foul. Good look inside, but a little bit too much for Wayne Henry. And Brixton now 25-21 in the lead by four. And I'm sure Humph Long is having a few nervous uh, palpitations right now. That's not a good shot from East London. And Berkovitz with the rebound. Nice lead pass and nice finish. And all of a sudden, Brixton Topcats 27-21. And they're moving smoothly. James Perkins has come in the game and really seemed to add something to the running attack. Well, East London's offense has just gone to pot since Brixton's gone to a little bit of a matchup zone, forcing East London to shoot from outside and using their athletic ability to get the ball in transition for some easy shots. Good change of pace there by Paul Ambrosius, and I think it certainly confused East London at the offensive end. In the game, Bob Patterson now for East London. East London in blue, Brixton Topcats in black. 11 is Richard Thomas. Misses the banker. Wayne Henry with the rebound. Junior Williams brings the ball up in pace. That's much better ball movement by Brixton. 
Williams misses. But there you see the rebound for Henry. Makes a little room for himself, but misses the shot. Gore rebounds, and there's Gooch with the ball. Patterson taking the shot. And good steal by Berkovitz. But throws the pass out there to be gobbled up by Patrice Gordon. Patterson faking the shot. Gore turns around on the baseline and misses. And cut off on the rebound by Junior Williams. He finds Osewusu and a nice pass, nice lead pass. And Brixton are up by eight as that man, again, James Perkins, gets the score. Gooch tries to do it himself, and he says, that elevator gets off the second floor, guy. And Eddie gets the block at one end, the finish at the other, and all of a sudden it's a 10-point lead to Brixton. What a turnaround. He looked like a mini mailman there. Block a <laughs> shot and then fill a the lane, and now another steal. And the momentum's going all the way of Brixton Topcats. Down by 10, right off the bat. Now they're up by 10. And they're a little bit fatigued right now. What Brixton needs is an influx of energy because they certainly don't want to start trying to beat them from the perimeter. Good offensive rebound by Brixton, though. James Perkins keeping his position, getting the second miss. The lead is 12. Timeout. East London Royals. Now it's the East London team that has to regroup. And here you'll see the replay. Berkovitz missing on the three-pointer. Nobody boxes number 11 out. He gets one offensive rebound. And look who's there on the other side. Perkins for the tip in, easy basket. And Martin Gore is all by himself all of a sudden for East London, when in the beginning of the game, they always had three players underneath. Well, that's right. And what they're not doing is boxing out. East London is a very poor team at boxing out, but that's because no one exploits that, you know? They get away with it because they've got size, but no one exploits their fundamentals in terms of boxing out. And they should be much, much better and much more physical at it, certainly at this age. And as soon as Brixton were willing to make that first pass inside, then even if they have to kick it out, they still got some ball movement going and getting open shots. Well, you hit the nail on the head. Usually on in offenses, you want to go inside and then out. Um, Brixton at first was basically happy to stay on the perimeter. Now they've started to penetrate under control, get the ball inside, and that's caused East London some problems. And East London down by 12. That's Bob Patterson off the bench with the ball. James Perkins stealing twice. There's the dish off. Oseyuso misses. Junior Williams gave him the dish. He misses a second time. But Perkins rebounds and starts it all over again. And James Perkins has come off the bench to do some work. He's got another rebound. At this pace, there you at this pace, that young man is going to be an excellent senior player just because of his desire. James Perkins didn't start the game, but when he came in, they, he came in at the moment they decided to go to a pressure game, and he's really had an influence at both ends of the court. We had an intentional foul there. Um, Captain Eddie Osiwasu called for uh, kind of getting Bob Patterson off his back a bit. So he'll shoot two, and they'll get the ball back afterwards. And what you worry, is that a momentum changer? You know, East London was almost down and out there, and you wonder if East London can get back in the game on the back of, of a foul like this one. He makes one of two, but East London keep the ball. Richard Thomas inbounding into Patterson and getting the ball back, but now Patterson at the point. You see Brixton looking to trap, and they do, and now Siuso comes up with the ball. Berkovich. And Perkins was coming inside. Henry's pass went through his hands. Berkovich misses the three. Good work by Henry, getting the board. And in by Eddie Osuwusu. Brixton, I'm not sure can play as well as play any better than they're playing right now. They are just killing East London on the boards, and East London has a, a rebounding problem right now. They really cannot compete 
unless they box out. And Gore on offense as well, alone underneath. He's not getting any help. No one's heading toward the basket, even though he was double teamed underneath. Patterson shot partly blocked by Henry. Henry now waiting for some help. Berkovic on the drive, banks it off the glass high. He had to alter that shot as Patrick Gordon was in the way. Great pass now from Patterson. Barnaby Lodes finishing up at the other end just in the game. That was a super pass from Patterson, though, from the left hand corner all the way under the basket for an easy layup. Brixton looking to be a little bit tired here, too. The pressure seems to be, the pressure defense that they're playing seems to be tiring them out. And nearly stolen by Junior Williams, but it goes off loads his hands. Ball come back to Brixton. And you're right, Mike, they are a little bit fatigued right now. They have really stepped up the pressure, caused East London all kinds of problems. And really, maybe what Paul Ambrosius needs to do is take a rest time out and maybe make one or two substitutions without losing his uh, momentum. These two men with the ball, Eddie Asuusu and 11 Henry, both look a little bit fatigued at the moment. They've been doing a lot of the work defensively. A nice shot. Good head and shoulders move out front, though. Got his defender off his feet. There's that pressure defense. And Henry blocks a second try by the opposite number 11, Richard Thomas. Junior Williams, Gore blocks that shot. Comes off to Patrice Gordon. He's going to take it himself. Loads the open man, but can't do anything with it before the defense catches up. And Richard Thomas taking it to the line. Paul Ambrosius putting David Odzakovich back in the game. Adzakovich. Here come Tom the free long puts Barry Gooch back in. And Chris Erskine, and I think you'll see East London step up their own defensive pressure a bit. Long cross court pass, Gooch misses the three. And I think the foul's on James Perkins down there. And number six, Patrice Gordon will go to the line. Uh, no, he won't because they're not in the penalty. Patras thought he was going blind. He thought he was <laughs> shooting. Yeah, nearly a jump ball. Richard Thomas is going to have drawn the foul on the inside man. Foul on Wayne Henry for the inside push as he was double teamed. You know what amazes me, Mike, in this game? How poor, fundamentally, some of these kids are in terms of boxing out. Gooch makes it three, but how poor they are in terms of boxing out and also in terms of passing. You know, they try and do so many things, you know, without the ball skills, without the practice that they should have. And uh, it amazes me that uh, their coaches let them get away with it. Junior. Oh. <laughs> Junior Williams with the scoop. And Junior Williams steals the inbounds pass. Good judgment there. Odzakovic slows things up. Berkovic and Junior Williams faking. And his normal shooting form is not good. That's not a, a good looking shot. But I tell you, it's like people say, who cares how ugly it is as long as it goes in. <laughs> Richard Thomas. And Richard Thomas at the other end. What I was what I was thinking of was when you see guys like that, you often think they learn to play when they're young in playground games where you're not allowed because you're a little guy to get that shot off, so you never get a chance to do your normal jump shooting and you learn protective shots, shots that aren't going to get blocked by the bigger guys. Certainly true on the East Coast when nobody shoots jump shots. <laughs> Everybody goes to the basket. Great pass. Oh, yeah. Great pass and the finish by Richard Thomas. And it's now an eight-point game. East London crawling back. And Junior Williams misses the shot at the buzzer. The halftime score, Brixton 39, East London 31. We'll be back with the second half after the break. 
of the Junior Championships, the Crystal Palace World Invitational Tournament. And it's 39-33 as Richard Thomas brings East London within six. Mike Carlson and Alton Bird here. And Alton, it looks like a little of that intensity is gone from the Brixton game. Well, you know, at the beginning of, 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 of every half, the first five minutes are the most important time of the game because you really do need to step up your level of intensity. And that's the time when, you know, you can either break a game open or you can lose it. Oh, and David Odzakovich open at the bottom of that zone, and he was open all the way through that sequence of play. Well, three people missed him, so somebody had to catch up with him. And Berkovich tips the pass away, but Gore has it. They look for Gore inside, but it's stolen away. That's great weak side defense, though. Very good weak side defense. Jump up. Berkovitz had, had the opening, tried the three. Gore gets the rebound. Zedi Asawusu got into a little bit of trouble dribbling. Patrice Gordon gets into a little trouble dribbling in his turnover. Brixton brings the ball back. They settle it down now. And I'm sure Humph Long is not a happy man with one of his biggest players handling the ball. Almost a, it's a matchup zone, it's almost a straight 1 3 1 the way Brixton set up, and last time the baseline was wide open. This time they get it, Osusu has the 12-foot jumper, but he misses, and on the rebound, it's gonna be a foul on Odzakovic, reaching in on Gore. But see, that's great ball movement. They got the penetration where they needed to, but they just didn't fill from top to bottom when they got penetration along the baseline. He got away with a travel there. Next time he should take a, a, a bus pass or a, or a train ticket or something, but he certainly got away with a travel there. And Brixton turned the ball over, an unforced turnover. And now it's a six-point game, and Paul Ambrosius needs to get Brixton back on track with some pressure. Gore with the rebound, but loses it off his own foot. And Junior Williams comes up with the ball. Looks down court, but now it'll come back to Junior Williams at the top. Asiusu misses a three. They, got to, they don't want to stop working the ball around. Their, if their passing game falls apart, they'll play right into Thames Valley, to East London's hand, sorry. East London Royals, Gooch with the three. Nodzikovic keeps control of the rebound. Junior Williams, the long lead pass for Henry. Henry makes it an eight point lead. Barry Gooch's responsibility is to get back for the fast break, and he didn't, he didn't follow his responsibility, and they got beat for an easy shot. Thomas's shot partially deflected after Patrice Gordon had missed one from the corner. Berkovitz missing from the outside. Odzakovich with the rebound, Berkovic driving. It's off, it's going to be off Chris Erskine. I gotta say I like Berkovitz and the way he plays in the Brixton setup. You know, they find him, he gets himself open, he rarely takes bad shots. Um, he does a good job. And there's the open man, and a nice look by Wayne Henry, who could have gone off when he got the first pass, but made the second pass, and Brixton's lead's back up to 10. He has a 2-2-1 zone press by Brixton. Foul by Osuwasu. And Chris Erskine just dribbles through the press. Makes the good pass for the drive. Gordon fouled as he goes up. Best way to beat a press is to attack the press going to the basket. And Gordon makes the first. And the second. So it's an eight point game again, 45-37. Brixton in the lead. Looking to upset the most fancy junior team in Britain, East London Royals. And Chris Erskine reaches in on Richard Thomas. Won't be a shooting foul. Richard Thomas went straight to the line. I suppose <laughs> if you go to the line, sooner or later the referees may hand you the ball. Yeah, you like to hope so anyway. <laughs> 
That's, That's it. a nice look by Richard Thomas. <laughs> Patrick Gordon goes up, comes down. The elevator never left the ground. <laughs> Odzikovic wasn't going anywhere. But that's a great pass, and it, it was quite simple. All he did was catch the ball to foul line, turn and face the basket, looked at the basket, and then found the open man. And again, not a shooting foul. If he'd been thinking about it, he might have tried to just get the shot off. Erskine with the steal, and a nice finish, and now it's a six-point game. In East London, their offense was starting to work, but they relax a little bit. You can't do that. Oh, a nice drive by Hatsikovic. Oh, left hand, right hand side of the basket. Erskine comes in again. Erskine's gotten a bit of fire back, and it's six points lead again, 47-41. He has such great court speed, this Chris Erskine. No movement from Brixton. Look at him. All five players standing in one spot. Nobody's moving at all. And this is what happened at the start of the game. And they've seen that they can they can penetrate on East London. Oh, that's not I, I don't think that's the best shot they could possibly take, but they got lucky on that on that sequence. They made their own luck by getting the ball there, but I'm sure Paul Ambrosius was looking at that 30-second clock saying, please get a shot up. And they got a shot up and got a basket. So East London now. Erskine with the long cross-court pass. And that is an ugly shot, but it goes in. And it's 49-43 to lead down to six again. He can get away with that shot, Patrice Gordon, in junior basketball at the senior level. That would, he would have whatever brand of ball it is smashed right in his face every time he shot. Flat-footed, holding the ball out in front of his head. Gooch brings it around a little bit. Leads down to four, 49-45. And basically, Brixton's standing around on defense and offense. Fatigue. They're very tired. If you look at their offense, look at their five players. Good, good spread offense, but nobody's moving. And there, Odzikovic comes across, and he's open. Thames Valley cut off Berkovic before he can get the three-pointer up. Junior Williams tries a three. Henry fights for the rebound and gets it. Comes across to Berkovic. And there... Just shooting up threes, Berkovitz. He gets called for the foul as he goes up for the rebound. The push from behind. That was a poor call, though, by Keith Bruce. He just made a bad call. The kid had the ball in his hands. There was no incidental contact. He didn't push the kid. He just went and got the ball. I think that was a poor call. Wouldn't argue that one at all. And a nice pass by Gooch. Patrick Gordon in and out of the basket. Junior Williams brings it through. He knew there was trouble coming. He's lucky to keep it. He thinks about the three. And again, they're not getting any penetration. And without that, their game suffers. And a traveling call against Brixton. Another strange one, because it looked like he got rid of the ball well before he came back down. Well, I certainly think Paul Ambrosius now has to call a timeout, because his kids are, are literally just standing around at the offensive, and they're even standing around defensively. And they challenge Patrick Gordon to shoot over the zone, and he does. And all of a sudden, it's a two-point game, 49-47, and Paul Ambrosius does call that timeout. Here you see on the replay, Gooch coming down. Look how far he penetrates before somebody stops him. They move the ball around. Erskine, no penetration, but he finds Gordon, and nobody challenges. He does challenge right at the end. Feet just inside the three-point line. It's 49-47. There's a timeout, and what's Paul Ambrosia saying to the Brixton Topcats? Well, what's happened to our offensive movement inside? They've got no penetration whatsoever. Basically, we're standing around. And I'm sure he's saying to his kids, hey, we got to keep penetrating. We've got to do what we did, which got us a 12, 13-point lead, and we can't stand around either offensively or defensively. He needs more life in his team right now. 
one of the keys if you're going to play zone defense, the zone has to move. It has to shift when the ball shifts. You, has, can't, you can't play flat-footed. It has to be active. It has to be an active zone. Working the ball a little bit better now, but still not much movement on offense. Henry from the foul line tries to bank it in, chases his rebound, and he's going to foul Richard Thomas in passing, as it were. But you notice Wayne Henry right now is happy to stay right at the high post, and what they need is some low post ball movement. They're not getting any low post activity, and that's why East London's job is so much easier um, at the defensive end. Patris Gordon in the corner. They're playing in there in the corner, and they deflect the pass. But Junior Williams dribbles it away, and Gooch comes up with it. Changes hands nicely and ties the game at 49. And you can see how slow Brixton's moving right now. Odzakovic dribbling it off his heel and then having trouble figuring out where the ball was. Berkovic. Berkovic misses. Gooch with a quick pass. And Erskine, a beautiful finish, and East London back in the lead for the first time since the opening minutes of the game. Erskine's one of those players. He may not be able to shoot a jump shot, but he knows how to make layups, and he knows how to use his speed. Barry Gooch doing a great job of taking that outlet pass and then really forcing the ball up court. Nice drive by Odzakovic, but missed layup by Asawusu. Henry misses on the foul and a lot of hard work for naught there. And you see having trouble getting back down, but Gooch doesn't have trouble. Richard Thomas missing at the other end. And what is, nothing is more backbreaking than missing easy layups. Long lead pass coming down to Gooch. He sees Erskine coming in. Erskine misses the two-handed follow. We're getting very sloppy right now. It's time for both teams to regroup. And it's time for us to regroup as well. Alton and I will be back with the finish of this game after the break. Join us then on Screen Sport. Bobcats, it's now 67-51. East London have forged back into a 16-point lead, and Brixton's pressure game just really killed them. Well, yeah, they've run out of stamina. They, they're basically a very, very tired team right now, and East London's size has helped them much more than imagined. Um, as I say, the Brixton kids, you know, Pat Riley of the New York Knicks always says basketball is a game of runs, game of spurts, and... Early in the game, East London had a spurt, and Brixton had a phenomenal spurt in order to uh, come back and, and be up by 12 points, up by set eight at halftime, and now East London has really turned it on, and uh, their size and their better conditioning has uh, worn on Brixton. So Wayne Henry at the foul line, missing his first shot. Obviously, they need to make every foul shot at this point. Henry makes the second, 67-52. Lead down to 15. And Gooch with the ball. And I'm sure what East London will do now is try and be patient on offense, make sure they take good shots. I wish that might not have been a good <laughs> shot, but somebody you heard, Somebody heard you. <laughs> What Brixton's got to do is get the ball down the floor and make good passes and get some easy baskets. And Junior Williams setting that play up nicely. And Henry with the rebound. 67-54. Brixton closing in. <laughs> Gooch, excuse me. As he pushes. As he pushes Odzakovic out of the way, the ball comes loose. Gooch spinning, spinning around with the backhand pass. Emphatic block by Henry, but he's called for a foul. Patrice Gordon goes to the line. My old friend Mikhail Davidov from the Soviet Union or, the, or Russia, as it is now. One of the best referees in all of Europe, Mikhail Davidov. And Patrice Gordon misses the first. 
three years ago did the European Cup final did Davidoff did Davidoff did Davidoff do? did Davidoff do Junior Williams looks like he's got a lot of potential as a point guard as well. Well, you know, you have to remember, this is a Brixton program, which is run by Jimmy Rogers, who has put out six England into full England internationals. And that's a great pass from Bruce to Chris Erskine. With six England internationals, including Ronald and Stedroy Baker, Leo Rogers, uh, some very, very good players. And Berkovic telegraphing that pass intended for James Perkins. And Richard Thomas uses the boards, lead back up to 17. Brixton a bit dejected right now because of East London's better stamina and their better uh, overall size and that's just basically worn Brixton down. They had a spurt where they played exceptionally good basketball, came back from a 13 to 3 deficit to take the lead. They led by as much as 14. Missed three point attempt by Odzakovic. Henry misses on the rebound. Odzakovic dishes it back to Henry, and he finishes. That brings it down to 71-56, but then Allaire just seemed to get let out of Brixton's tires. Well, there's no pressure defense right now, and Brixton basically is a very, very tired team. And James Perkins called for the, for the foul, and I was a little surprised that James Perkins wasn't in a bit more in the second half, maybe even to start it, because when they went to the pressure game, he was one of the keys to making it work. Number 13, Martin Gore, who's done a lot of the work underneath all by himself for East London. But most of East London's game is revolved around the penetration of Barry Gooch and Chris Erskine. Well, they're the two keys for this team. You know, Erskine knows that he's not a great outside player, not a good perimeter player, but that man there is very active, and there aren't many kids at the age that Barry Gooch is that can come down, make a steal, and pull up on a dime, or on a 10p piece, I should say, and shoot a jump shot. <laughs> pull up on a floor oh, and give you a shilling's change. <laughs> Barry Gooch, 18 years old, and the captain of this East London team. That's Erskine with the ball, and that's Paul Ambrosius. Long cross-court pass. Back to Gooch at the top. No hurry now for East London. They've got the lead and the clock's working in their favor. And Richard Thomas takes his time and puts the banker in. 58-76, Brixton trailing by 18. And if you're sticking the fork in Brixton right now, <laughs> they may be done. They are done. Aseo Usu missing, Patrice Gordon missing. It looked good, Patrice, but it didn't go in. Yeah, that highlight film, or that highlight film shot just didn't work for Gordon. Gooch with another, looks one way, throws the other, Gordon, sorry, not, uh, Gordon gets the pass from Thomas as Thomas was falling out of bounds. Thomas comes back in the game. Shots blocked. Odzakovic, and it's stolen back by Erskine. And Erskine, a little bit of hang time there, and picks up the foul. Odzakovic gets him on the head. And he knows what to do when he gets the ball. Chris Erskine does. Chris gets ball. Chris goes to basket. <laughs> and you were saying earlier, maybe you could say talk a little bit more about that, but so many of these kids seem to have real talent but in a, limited, in a limited part of the game. They don't have a complete game. It doesn't look like they've really learned the basic fundamentals right at the start of their uh, basketball careers. Well, some of these kids start so much later than, say, kids in America who start at seven, eight years old in a lot of the school leagues. These kids, historically, don't, usually don't start until they're 11, 12, 13 years old, and they miss three, four 
key years of fundamental basic basketball. And that's a real shame. Although it is changing, there are more eight and nine year old kids playing basketball in this country than ever before. But uh, these kids have started late and you can tell fundamentally why they are so different um, than say kids on the continent at their age group uh, in terms of Spanish, German, right. so and so. And Chris Erskine, obviously a really talented athlete with a lot of positives as a basketball player, but look at that foul shot. <laughs> well, as we said before, he knows where the basket is, but he is not a good perimeter player. He may never be a good perimeter player, but there have been some great players who weren't perimeter players like Magic Johnson. He wasn't the greatest. He taught himself to be one, though. That's right. He was shooting threes by the end of his career. And it's not just in America where, young, where youngsters are developing uh, fundamentals at an early age, but Yugoslavia, Spain, they bring them in very early and, and they teach them the correct way to, to do things and then let them develop as individuals. That's right. You know, and, and that you have to admire for the way Yugoslavia has developed their players and become maybe the top nation or, no question, the top nation outside of the United States for basketball in the world. And another time out on the court with less than a minute to go. This one's all all but over East London with a 20-point lead. And Brixton, you don't so often see games where the lead goes so far one way, then the other way, and then comes all the way back to a 20-point lead for the original leading team. But East London reaffirming their position as the top junior team in Britain with a big win in the final of the Russell Athletic World Invitational Tournament from Crystal Palace. Oh, and Ase Usu with the three-pointer. Could have done with a couple of those earlier in the match. Here's the replay. That's so good, we're going to see it again. It's like disc jockeys when I was a kid. <laughs> Play that 45 one more time. And he doesn't have a great-looking shot either, but that one goes in without any problem whatsoever. Now, I'm going to anticipate my colleague, Alton Bird, who I can read like a book these days. <laughs> and decide that he's going to give the Golden Bird Award for man of the match to number seven, Barry Gooch on East London. Well, I think you're right. Um, not necessarily by choice, but, uh, <laughs> but because- It hurts, it hurts. Well, he's certainly done a bit more in terms of moving the ball. His penetration has, has really hurt Brixton and uh, his ability to distribute the ball has caused him all kinds of problems and he has made the difference today. Who else makes the short list? Erskine, obviously, because of his ability to finish the plays. He, he's been there to finish. Um, Patrice Gordon's had not a bad game for, for East London. So they've all played pretty well, but Gooch has certainly been the catalyst. Right, and on the losing side, um, they seem to tire out really fast, and the lack of mobility hurt. I said I like Junior Williams. Uh, he's got a lot of potential. James Perkins, I thought, played very well in the first half when he came in. And also on the winning side, a word from Martin Gore, who did a lot of work, especially in the first half, underneath, pretty much by himself. Well, this is an East London team, remember, that has had a number of kids recruited to the United States for U.S. colleges. There are two over there now, Brian Balser, who is at Siena College. Um, and the other kid's name escapes me, but certainly Brian Balser has played senior basketball here. So they Mark... Martin Gore, Mike, has a bright future. 80-63. East London up by 17. Patterson, the long three misses at the buzzer. The final score and the championship of the junior division of the international championship goes to East London Royals, 80-63. We'll be back in the next couple of days with the rest of the tournament. Stay tuned to Screen Sport. For Alton Bird, I'm Mike Carlson. See you tomorrow. Football Europa brings you the pick of the action from the championships.